is the shift from um, resilience, which is also in a way a survivor, you know, mode. Survivor is is the first step, you know, to help people come into that from victims and to survivors and to help them find the resilience, the capacity to, to um, remember and, and res restore what they already have in their place. Um, but we need to go beyond just the survivor mode, but how do we help people thrive? And thriving is a different experience where you're, you still go through the risk and then the challenges, but you're able to kind of come back really fast. And so from that space is the shift from resilience to regeneration, the shift from survivor to thriver. And so regeneration is where like the ecosystem can actually, you know, meet the, the, the shocks. It's, it's strong enough to uh, adapt quickly. It's able to um, support, you know, um, challenges that happen and recover really faster than, than if you were in resilience and survivor mode. So um, there are many levels to that. And it has to do with um, also the shift from restoring, restoring the, you know, what we have lost and, and reclaiming that into restoring. So we changed the story and changed the narrative. Today we were trying to strategize how do we highlight the knowing of um, the Asian culture and the Pacific culture on developments um, and regeneration. Because like, for example, if you go to Bhutan, you have the gross national happiness as a way to measure, um, you know, uh, uh, countries, um, economic uh, or other development standards. You, they are also the net zero, uh, a country that has, you know, zero, has trying to meet zero carbon um, by, by offsetting that. And there, um, if you go to Thailand and the Buddhist countries and nations, they have their own economic model that's founded on, you know, compassion. And if you go to, you know, the Pacific Islands and you have the popular circular economy right now, but there's also the, like, how do the Maori people um, perceive a circular economy from an indigenous worldview? It's not just the Maoris, you have a lot of indigenous communities here that already have a whole system approach to things. And so for us, we're trying to see is how do we shape and acknowledge these um, um, knowing and wisdom, which, which the wisdom is more of the application of knowing that has been practiced over time. And it's really just embodied. It's already lived and tested. You know, it's not something you, you ideate and implement and test and prove. In the Philippines, the word for leadership is um, pamumuno. And pamumuno is the root word is tree. And so when, uh, when we think of a tree as a tree, and in a worldview of an indigenous worldview that is rooted in, you know, um, earth wisdom and, and deep, deep knowing of our relationships with the earth, that kind, that's the kind of leadership and governance we hope to, um, that shows up, I guess, in the spaces that I, I help create and co-create with these communities. For me, yeah, that it has been a truly special and still continues to be a special journey. We're about to work with another, another indigenous community in the South where there are dream weavers, you know, we, dream weavers that they channel with um, their weaving designs from dreams, um, but they're also like, at risk of losing their biodiversity and, and they're starting to, you know, depend on, um, no longer depend on their land for food. So we're also supporting that process of helping support indigenous food systems of the place. So, um, so yeah, I continue, it's just an ongoing journey and just, we trust whoever invites us is always a new experience, but still a deep, deep old experience and wisdom to draw from. So.